you know your body is interlinked, your heart, your lungs, your kidneys, they all have to work together to keep you the bright ray of sunshine that you are. But that goes several steps further than we realize, like your brain, which almost seems independent in its high ivory tower, high above the rest of your organs, barking commands to the rest of the proletariat. Because it turns out that the vessels feeding your brain may in fact be revolting, increasing your risk of cognitive decline. What am I on about? I'm talking about the plaque that builds up in your arteries if you don't take care of yourself. Over time, secreting messages that hijack your brain's immune system, causing damage to your brain. These things, under a microscope or in a bit of a cartoonish style, are called exosomes. They're these vesicles, these little packages, that contain different molecules within them that influence our cells. And it's been recently discovered that when we build up plaque in our arteries, our arterial plaque begins releasing more of these exosomes, which then travel throughout the body, but importantly to the ivory tower, our head, our brain. Once there, they cause white matter lesions. What is that, you might ask? Well, your brain is split into two different compartments, or at least it can be. You may have heard of gray matter and white matter, unrelated to dark matter those physicists go on about. Gray matter is the actual body of the cell. You know what? Let me throw a visual up for you. The gray matter is the made up of the uh, cell, different cell bodies. The white matter, on the other hand, is the long projections like tentacles that extend away from the body called axons. These axons are how we deliver information, the cell body to other regions of the brain and often to another brain cell, another neuron. These axons have a fatty sheath like the sheath to a sword, or when you get rolled up in a blanket like a tortilla. The axon is the tentacle from the body, but the sheath, called myelin, is the protector, the insulator. It allows the messages, the electrical signaling from the cell body, to the end of the axon at a much faster rate. That sheath, the myelin, is what gives those compartments of the brain the definition of white matter. Now, I'm telling you all that because the interconnectedness of your brain, the more intact functioning white matter, the better your brain health, all else equal. So, we understand what white matter is, and we understand that intact white matter is important for cognitive health. And this is where white matter lesions can play a disruptive role because it's an area of damage within the white matter. Those neat myelin sheaths and potentially the axons, the communication tentacles are damaged, which impairs brain function. That means in simple terms, returning to our exosomes, these messages released by the plaque in our arteries are damaging our brain. Okay, pretty fascinating in its own right, but how is the brain actually damaged by these messages? If I check a letter at you, it's unlikely to do much to you unless you get a paper cut. And even then you'll probably just be a little bit annoyed. Same for the brain. Well, when we take exosomes from two groups of people, one group without clinical atherosclerosis, so plaque and arteries, and the other does have atherosclerosis, and we apply these exosomes to brain immune cells called microglia, we get a set of revealing reactions. Essentially, when microglia, those are the brain immune cells, are exposed to the exosomes produced by people who have atherosclerosis, they increase the gene expression, the production of pro-inflammation molecules. That's one thing. But another thing that they do is reduce the activity of mitochondria. This all points to microglia, so these brain immune cells being the prime suspect for these exosomes to work through to cause this brain damage. Think of it like the exosomes are the messengers to the hitmen, and the microglia are the hitmen that uh, betray the mafia family. Isn't that right, Don Corleone? <laughs> but, but there's still something troubling me here, because sure, we have the message, we, sure, we have the hitman, but who would step out against the family? Who instigated this atrocity? We know it originates from the plaque had built up in our arteries, but it's not like exosomes package themselves and spontaneously appear. So who's the head don of this rival family? For that, when we, and I mean scientists, take samples from the human folk 
we can parse out the origin of this madness. And this madness doesn't have to end because this massive study that we're going over has over a hundred pieces of data describing all kinds of fascinating aspects, like what these exosomes are carrying or what's the message itself, the implications on our immune uh, mitochondria, the impact on our brain performance and more. If you're interested in the full analysis and accompanying article, much extended video, private podcast and more, all ad free, plus live sessions with me, yours truly, all that is exclusive to my private community and research platform, The Physiotic Insiders. Join me in the community. Would love to have you aboard. The link to join along with all the perks explained is in the description box. Hopefully I'll see you there. So where is this all coming from? Our immune system, but not our whole immune system, only a select very specific cell type in our immune system. You may have heard of this one before, but when we develop our plaque in our arteries, certain immune cells called macrophages build up in our plaque. They try to eliminate the buildup of cholesterol and deposits in the blood vessel, the artery wall. If these macrophages consume too much of the cholesterol, they become overburdened and turn into something called a foam cell. These foam cells secrete a lot of pro-inflammatory molecules to attract more immune cells to help them clear out the cholesterol deposits. However, they also create exosomes. So this means that the dawn of the other family creating the hit orders, aka the exosomes, was trapped macrophages inside the plaque that had turned into bloated foam cells. Now, all this research that we've been over, and there's plenty more in this study mixing mechanistic mouse data with a, with a breadth of human data, all confirming this idea that plaque in our arteries is not just a cardiovascular disease risk, but actively damages our brain too, even if that plaque is not around our brain. That said, I've covered many examples of how to reduce our plaque burden and even keep it at bay, which I'll link for you. But the bottom line is this. We have strong evidence that arterial plaque harms our brain through immune cells stuck in that arterial plaque that then release messages in exosomes, little vesicles, packages, that then bind to brain immune cells called microglia, causing them to be aggressive and destructive, causing damage to our brain. So this is all the more reason to keep your arteries clear and healthy. And you can do exactly that described across many of my videos like this one or the others that I'll link in the description. Someday, that day may never come. I'll call upon you to do service for me. Actually, that call for service is right now. It's furthering your health by clicking on this next video. Thanks for tuning in and let me know if you got the reference. I'll see you in the next one.